Paris, September 23rd, 1788. Dear Arno, I never thought I could be so bored in Paris. Can you imagine it? The greatest city in the world, and here I am, stuck in endless lectures from dawn to dusk. It's worse than that winter we spent in Strasbourg. Do you remember? When it snowed for a week straight, and we couldn't leave the house, and all the books in the library were in German. <laughs> we convinced that cook the house was haunted by some young Frankish prince. And the poor man refused to leave his kitchen without a rosary in one hand, and a Bible in the other. I miss those days. The things I'm learning from father's friends are... Well, I wish I could tell you about them. Someday, perhaps. But not now. And not like this. But still, I find myself missing those days. Missing home. Missing you. Next time father comes to Paris, you must persuade him to bring you along. I remain always your, Elise. Dear Arno, I confess I'm not entirely sure what to say here. It was good to see you again. Somehow rings hollow. An empty space unfit to contain the totality of my feelings. And yet I am pleased. Pleased that the assassins have not changed you completely. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. You never were one to be easily awed. It seems we have both found ourselves at an impasse in the hunt for my father's killer. Perhaps together, we can accomplish what neither of us could alone. It's nice to think that after all this time, we're still better together than apart. Yours, Elise. Oh, Arno. What have you done? I know we didn't part on the best of terms, but to go running to the assassins? My father kept you away from them for a reason. Their creed is like wine, sweet enough at first blush, and in moderation it makes life seem more bearable. But drink too deeply, and you find naught but madness and anarchy. No doubt they've already filled your mind with tales of how dreadful we Templars are, that we would make slaves of humanity and place our boots on the world's neck. You knew my father, and you know me. I can only pray that is enough to give the lie to those tales. My order has turned against me, and I am hunted by those I once called friend. I could not bear it if you turned against me also. Think of me, and be well, Elise. Dearest Arno, I can barely conceive how much has changed in the last three years. How far our roads have taken us. Sometimes I feared our paths would diverge forever. Or else come together at loggerheads like the star-crossed lovers in some hackneyed stage piece. Yet here we are. Not the same brash children we once were. Nor yet strangers. When this is over. When Germain is dead at our feet and my father rests. Who then will we be? Assassin Mentor and Templar Grandmaster? The continuation of the old? Or the beginning of something new? Will we shape the future of our world? Or will we retire quietly to the countryside to raise goats? I can just see you, a goat herd, leaping and climbing about the Alps. No goat would have a chance of escaping you. I do not know what the next days, months, years will bring. All I know is that we shall remain Arno and Elise. And with that, I am content. Je t'aime. Elise. Dear Arno. I hope I know what I'm doing.